uh, we have promised uh, audiences that I will take a question. So, so uh, uh, understand is a bit over, but I think it's really interesting. So we take some questions and then it will be in the recording. So anyone who missed out can still watch the recording afterwards. The first question from Eileen and ask a thank, thank you, Professor Soon, for such illuminating evidence. Uh, based research uh, presentation. May I please ask if the workers engaging in moments of intimacy during their breaks provide permission for their pictures to be taken by the photographer? Yeah, uh, that's interesting. That is an interesting question. Um, uh, this photo was, uh, those photos were taken by a photographer who um, was himself at one point uh, a rural migrant worker. So he was quite in touch with workers, but he did actually take photos. Um, and um, when they first got put online, and there was a lot of questions about, uh, you know, have you asked permissions from, from, from the individuals? And uh, so there is there's a lot of issues, questions to ask regarding the privacy or not. And so much so that uh, he just didn't feel really comfortable using his um, uh, uh, real name. Um, um, yes, that the, there is that issue, and, and actually, that question um, is tied back to the question of inequality in a cultural domain. You know, uh, um, if you are actually enjoy pub having public uh, intimacy in the public space, you're more exposed, right? You're most more exposed not only in the physical sense, but you're also exposed in the cultural sense because once the photography um, the photos are taken is put online then people are free to judge <laughs> and to criticize as well as to show sympathy too mm -hmm. right so i think it's a double-edged sword mm -hmm. yes uh Eileen asked the question uh, another question in the same field is in your work did you come across the same sex intimacies Ah, that's a very good question. I didn't actually go to the field uh, with this question uh, on the agenda, but nevertheless, in my uh, interviews with uh, people, I, I I have come across I come I have come across uh, um, workers who who were and for instance, one of the young women, she was only like nineteen or something, and uh, she was uh, what what they called Lala. She's a lesbian, right? And uh, and hers is a really painful story because uh, she was not comfortable about telling and uh, coming out to her family. And so she has two elder brothers and, and older brothers and a mother. And uh, only one brother knows about this. And she couldn't tell the, old, the other brother and couldn't tell her mom. And I think not being able to tell family is a source of anguish for her. And yes, yes, the short answer is yes. There. Mm -hmm. Maybe that will be the next book that you're going to write. Uh, the next question is a quote of, uh, around a similar line is given the personal nature of your research and the fact that your participants tend to be less educated and lower skilled. Were these people, um, yeah, where's my question? Uh, yeah, uh, were these people uh, you encountered who did not understand your project and what you're doing at a university-based research uh, as university-based researchers. If so, what did you do to convince them to share their stories? You know, this is a great question because I think this person who asked this question is was thinking along the methodological line as a researcher. And he was this person is asking the question about translation, right? Translation of a particular kind. Um, as I was talking to a journalist in the US and uh, um, and I'll say that there's a, a many process of translation going on here. And the first process of translation is, how am I going to translate my theoretical agenda into a kind of field work, uh, uh, questions that I can um, make sense to the workers and actually uh, under the workers understand. And then so that I can generate the answers from the workers in a way that then later on I can come back to 
to, to Sydney and start writing and make sense of them and then, then put them into kind of a scholarly kind of a discussion. So that process is, is, is an extremely difficult one. I still don't have an answer to that because, you know, I have this idea about, you know, I want to critique neoliberalism. I want to critique capitalism uh, and it's like emotion. And I want to do uh, all that. It's all theoretical big words. And I've hit the field and, and talk to workers. I, I can't actually sit in front of them and say, now, tell me how is, uh, you know, social economic inequality impact on the way you experience the intimacy? That would be just absolutely stupid, you know, that nobody would understand what you're talking about. And so I have to think really hard about, you know, how do I to go about doing this? And I, again, and on top of that is a question about how to gain their trust, right? Because intimacy is something that you don't even want to necessarily tell your parents. And why would I tell the strangers? So what, what I do as one of the strategies is to say, um, um, both in a group discussion and in an individual's uh, sort of uh, interview, tell me your favorite love story. Have you seen a movie or a novel? And so, and then I get them to nominate that story and they said, tell me what the story is about and why is that story resonating with you? And in the process of doing that, you kind of shift the focus from themselves onto a fictional set of characters. And in the, in, in the process of, in the process of them uh, uh, making sense of what's going on in the story, they inevitably draw on their personal uh, socioeconomic uh, experience to interpret what's in the text. So what they actually, in, the, in other words, what's happening in the text at the same time also allowed them to make sense of, of their own experience. And sometimes they would just say, you know, I interpret it that way because, you know, my own experience is just that. And that's, that's when the, they actually started to open up and, and some open up more than others. But and some open up later than you know than earlier. But you know, I see that as a, a safer and less intrusive way of getting a little bit closer. But I I do not ever want to claim I've actually finally got it. You know, I just have to devise various ways of doing research so that I can get a little bit closer. Mm. That's all. Um, Eleanor May has two questions. The first question is really big, so I don't think we will have time to answer, maybe another time, is what is the Chinese government doing to address this overt disparity, you know, between uh, urban and um, uh, rural? But we skip that question, but she, uh, uh, Eleanor has uh, another very good question. Uh, it says, it, this may seem to be an odd question, but does the lack of a privacy mean that a domestic violence is a seen and heard more in these places in provinces, or is it just kept even quieter? And oh. there is less of it or less of it occurring, which is definitely not. A very good question, actually. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I would like to speak very briefly to the first question, too. Uh, mm. It is a broad question. Um, the, the state, the government is very, very anxious about it, and they want really genuinely want to do something about it. They have issued quite a few docu official documents uh, about it. And the, the fact that they're issuing those you know, official documents is a signal to, 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 to social sciences policymakers, you guys need to get to know, understand a lot more about this. You need to do more research about this. So as a result of it, there's a big growing body of literature that's been written about this. And there's a lot of recommendations in, and the most of important of which is to reform the hukou system, right? Uh, in other words, unless you remove the structural obstacles, you cannot get much in getting nowhere in terms of solving the actual problems. Um, but am I seeing a lot of evidence that it is improving? Not really, not within really my, 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 my study period. As to the second question, um, which- It's about domestic violence. Yeah, 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 it's a great of... question, mm -hmm. a great question. If you have an opportunity to read some of the chapters where uh, I tell individual stories of the individuals, uh, and uh, there is uh, there is that chapter on women and how they uh, perform the onus of doing more intimacy work within the relationship. You will see that uh, there is a lot of uh, um, there is a lot of uh, concern about domestic um, violence, and uh, there is uh, domestic violence of the physical nature, and there's domestic violence of the cold 
uh, uh, nature in a sense that it's not necessarily physical abuse, but there is just kind of unwillingness to communicate. Um, and women tend to bear the brunt of this and also tend to do um, work harder to keep the relationship going. And uh, one of the workers that I have uh, uh, featured in, in that chapter is about a woman who otherwise is a very, very strong character and she champions for women's uh, workers' rights and so on and so forth. And she still is married to her husband, but there's domestic violence in there. And she openly acknowledged to me, but she also is um, aware of domestic violence in other co-workers situations. And um, yes, uh, I think it is um, less visible simply again, because of the fact that it's not something that they want to uh, tell the, everybody else. At the, also at the same time, it's probably about, again, the access to visibility, uh, you know, a, a middle class is woman's life is probably just more interesting to the media and, and to the Western media, particularly than you know what's going on uh, among the uh, marginalized groups. Mm. We have to stop here. It's uh, really way over the time, but clearly it is so interesting. And thank you again so much, Professor Wan Yinsun, for uh, you know very illuminating presentation and this great conversation and also above all this wonderful book of wonderful you know significance it's a great book um thank I would you very much for the opportunity uh, jing and for asking such such good questions <laughs> it's a fascinating actually uh taking out a few questions and i have to ask you another time it's really fascinating really interesting so lastly, I would also like to announce that the RAC Culture Talks and Lecture 2 will be on transnational divorce. So not that we intend to talk about love troubles and then followed by divorce, <laughs> uh, but maybe these are just to naturally link the topics. So Lecture 2, Transnational Divorce, will be delivered by my colleague, the senior lecturer in our School of Humanities and Communication Arts at Western Sydney University, Dr. Yiling Kwa uh, in the last week of August, and we will send out the invitation. So thanks again, Wan Ying, and thank you all, audience, for your support and for your interest. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.